Hi guys and thank you for tuning in today. Today we're going to be building the DL180 mini quad from Banggood.com. If you look into the description you will find links to all of the products used in this video. Here's a quick look at some of the components. You can see I've already screwed on the camera mount onto this plate here. Also I've put the isolation mount into the top plate. I'm going to be using a power distribution board with a 12 volt and 5 volt out. The flight controller we're using is a NACE32. Here's a quick look at the bottom plate as you can see I've already installed the six standoffs and four of the nylon mounts for the flight controller. So let's get straight into the build as you can see I've got the power distribution board here. First thing we need to do is add some solder onto the gold contacts and add our battery cable. You can go ahead and start covering all of the gold contacts with solder. I always make sure that I put plenty on there. And when you're doing this, just be careful that you don't touch any of the chips that are already on the board. Once you've done that, you can then solder in your battery cable and connector. It's worth soldering them in on an angle so that they don't cover up the holes. Now that that's done, I'm going to add a cable to the 5 volt out. The 5 volt out is going to go to our flight controller and actually power the flight controller. The wire that I'm using is just a simple servo cable. This will be simply soldered onto the 5 volt out and then later on we will plug the servo end into one of the empty ESC ports. Now we're going to add a cable into the 12 volt out. We're going to use the cable provided with the Amway video transmitter. I'm just going to cut through it here and then we will solder this straight into that 12 volt out. You can see that I'm stripping the cable back just to reveal the black and red. The black will go to the negative and red to positive obviously. So when I add power to this later, the 5V will do the flight controller and the 12V will do the video transmitter, which in turn will power the 5V camera. This will give us a nice clean FPV signal without any need for extra filtering. So let's move along to our motors and ESCs. Now the cables that come on these BE1806s are really long, so we're going to be cutting them down shorter. And then we will be directly soldering them into the ESC. So as you can see, I've pulled back the heat shrink on the ESC to reveal the contact points here where you solder. So if you desolder that it should look like this and then you'll be able to cut the cables on your motors and solder them directly onto those points as you can see here. Now when you're actually doing this it's worth soldering two motors in with all the wires going directly in from left to right and then two motors with two of the wires crossed over as you see here. This will give you your clockwise and counterclockwise motors. You can see that I've used a little bit of heat shrink here just to cover over those contacts. It makes it look a little bit more neater and it should help prevent any shortages from any splashes of water. Here you can see I'm just lining up the motor and ESC just to check that the cables are going to be long enough to go to the power distribution board. Here's a good example of what I was just talking about using clockwise and counterclockwise. Two of the motors have the wires going straight in and two have the wires crossed over. So the motors with the wires going in straight, which you can see on the left hand side there, are the counterclockwise, which are motors 2 and 3. And the ESCs with the crossover are motors 1 and 4, which are your clockwise motors. We can now go ahead and solder these straight into the power distribution board. Put the clockwise on your front left and your back right, and your counterclockwise on your front right and back left. Add the red ESC cable to the plus and the black ESC cable to the negative. Here you can see all of our ESC cables now connected to the power distribution board. You can go ahead and now attach the power distribution board, ESCs and motors into the frame. When you're attaching the motors to the arms it's worth using the slimmer slots rather than the thicker slots otherwise the screws will actually push through them. So let's have a quick overview. Here we have our power cable which will go to our video transmitter and is 12 volts. And here we have our 5 volt out which will go to our flight controller in the ESC port. So let's move on to our flight controller which is the NACE32. We're actually going to mount this sideways so that the USB sticks out the side. This makes it easier for firmware updates and PID adjustments. All we have to do is tell the flight controller in clean flight that it has been turned by 90 degrees. So let's solder our pins onto the flight controller. Now traditionally you will have the pins sticking out from the side like this. But because this is a small quad and we want to save on space I'm actually going to face them around the other way and have the cables point inwards. To ensure that everything is going to fit correctly and be seated right, I'm going to just attach this servo cable to give me the right clearance. You can then go ahead and start soldering in the pins. As you can see, because we had a servo cable in, we know that this is now seated correctly and we can pull the servo cable in and out. This is where our ESCs are going to go. 
we can now go ahead and start soldering in the pins that are going to be used to go to our receiver. If you're following these steps, your flight controller should now look like this. As an optional extra, I'm actually going to add a buzzer onto mine. This will give me a buzzing noise to let me know that I've armed the machine. Also, if I lose the machine, I can activate the buzzer, which will help me find it. These buzzers are extremely cheap, but very effective. Again, I'll put a link in the description. So here I'm actually connecting the breakout cable to the ports on the front or what is now the front and then these individual cables can go off to your receiver. Now you may not need to use this if you're using CPPM. You can set this up using just one single servo cable. You can go ahead and actually screw down the flight controller now using the nylon screws that came in the kit. Then we can use our 5 volt out cable which we soldered onto the power distribution board earlier and plug that into the last ESC port. To ensure this is going to work correctly, make sure that you get the polarity correct. Now when we power up the quad, the power distribution board will give a nice clean 5 volts out to the flight controller and your receiver. You can actually now start plugging in all of the ESC, so starting with ESC number 1 which is the back right, to ESC number 2 which is the front right, ESC number 3 which is the back left and ESC 4 on the front left. And once that's done, you can tidy things up a little using some zip ties. You can now connect your receiver to the breakout cable. As I mentioned earlier, if you're going to be using CPPM, you can just use one servo cable and go straight across the first one, two, three pins. If you're going to be using PWM like I am here, then you can start with the first pin here and plug that into your number one on the receiver, then your number two will go to two, three to three, four to four, and so on. So this may vary depending on what receiver you're using. This receiver is a little bit big for this kind of quad, so I've took the plastic casing off and put some tape around it. Here you can see that I'm just checking that everything's gonna fit inside, and we still have our cable coming out to go to our video transmitter. So moving on to the FPV side of things, you can see I've got the wide angle miniature camera here and the lens is actually too small to fit inside the camera holder so I've used a bit of double sided tape just to thicken it up slightly and I can now squeeze this inside the camera holder. Here's our Aeon weight 200 milliwatts. As you can see, we can take 6 to 28 volts into this, but we're actually going to be using the 12 volt out, which we soldered in earlier. But first of all, we need to connect our cable to go from the camera to the video transmitter. This is really easy to do, and it will give us 5 volts to power the camera, as well as our video and ground. So to start, just snip off the white connector, as we will not be using this from the camera. We can then cut the cable that came with the Aeon weight video transmitter, and add that to the video camera as you can see here. So as we pull off the shielding, you'll see all of the essential cables inside that we're going to use. Now the cables that we are going to use in this are the yellow for our video, the red will give us our five volts to the camera, the white will be a one channel audio, and then the one that doesn't have a cover on it will be our ground, which will go to the black. Now it's worth noting on the Aeon Way cable that there is a black cable also on there. Now we're not gonna use that because that is just another audio channel and our camera only has one microphone, so it's in mono, not stereo. So you can go ahead and solder all of the cables in now. So you can see red goes to red, yellow to yellow, white to white, and then the one that doesn't have a cable sheath on it goes to the black, which is your ground. You can then either tape these up or use some heat shrink like I have here. So once that's done, you can then use that connector and plug it straight into the Aeon Way video transmitter. So now your filtered power distribution board is given a nice 12 volts to the Aeon Way video transmitter and the Aeon Way is then giving it a nice clean 5 volts to the camera. This helps cut down on interference when you're powering up and down your quad. So now you can finally attach that 12 volt cable to your Aeon Way. And I'm going to go ahead and complete the rest of the build by adding the FPV camera and video isolator onto the top plate. And here you can see how the FPV camera is then mounted underneath the isolation mount and can be angled up and down. Then you can go ahead and put the top plate onto the quad and this is what it looks like. 
You can see on the rear of the quad, I've mounted the Aon Way onto the back so I have access to the dip switches to give me different channels. And you can see that the Mobius action camera can fit nicely on top without taking up too much space. I can actually hold this on top using a Velcro strap. So let's go ahead and add our prop mounts and the props to all of the motors. Now if you want to get some really decent power and thrust then I would suggest using the 4045 bull noses on these motors. Personally for me these props don't produce enough thrust so I would definitely think about getting some 4045 bull noses as it makes the machine a completely different animal. Another worthwhile upgrade is ditching these cone nuts and using some M5 nylock nuts. You can set the flight controller up to your own specific flight configuration in clean flight. Personally, I use Boris B's Beta Flight and the P controller Lux Float as this flies perfect on that without any tuning. So let's give it a quick test flight. So everything appears to be working fine, including the buzzer which I installed. So that's it for today's DL180 build video. I just want to say a quick thank you to banggood.com for actually sending all of the components that are used in this video. You will find links below in the description. So stay tuned for a follow up video when we take this DL180 out and put it through its paces. So thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.